Welcome to Caseback Watches, my name is Tim. In this video I'd like to speak about Kittelas watches and Zeiger straps. Two products I find very interesting and two individuals behind those products which I find also very interesting and very ambitious and yeah let's let's do this. Let's start with the watch. The first time I've seen Kittelas watches by the way, I'm really sure that I'm butchering the name. I have no idea how to pronounce this. It's from the Netherlands. The first time I've seen Kittelas watches was on a forum and I was immediately stunned by the, by the view and by the yeah, newness of the, of the design. And um, yeah, and then, then I've wrote an email to Stefan Kittelas, which is the founder of, of, of this, of this uh, yeah, small company. And I said to him, I need a watch here on Caseberg Watches to review it, to do a full review. And of course, I will give it back. I don't want a gift and I, want to, I don't want to have any money for this. But I want to show the audience this great piece, this your, your work. And then, or excuse me, it's super, super hot here today. And he wrote back then and said, um, yeah, very sorry, but um, I, I work order based. And so I have very few watches here. And so I cannot send you a watch, but I can answer your questions, send you images, and then, yeah, I returned um, a catalog of questions and he answered all of them. And I think now I have enough material to, yeah, to give you a proper introduction into Ketelaar's watches. And Stefan Ketelaar's is some sort of, let's call him a geek in a good way, in a good way, because his first mechanical watch he bought at the age of 10, 10 years old. And with 16, he decided, I want to skeletonize movements. I mean, <laughs> how do you come to that idea? How do you, I mean, to say, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a watch fan. I love these timepieces. I will skeletonize the movement now. But he decided to do this and he did. He bought some, some tools and then he started to skeletonize movements at home. And later on, he decided, I want my own complications. And I don't want to, to make a, a date. We're not talking about date functions. We're, talk, we're talking about real complications. Let's say rotating moon on the dial or rotating earth or both or a reverse balance wheel on the dial. Those are the complications you can find today on his watches, in his watches. And today Stefan Ketelars is 26 years old, 26 years old Dutch and he produces his own watches with those marvelous complications and he does everything in-house except the movements. We will talk about the movements a little bit in a minute. But all this, all these tiny elements on his watches, the, 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 the globes and the, the moon, he does in his house. And then I've asked him, um, how much time do you need? How many hours do you need to produce one single watch? And he answered, um, the time depends on the model. The simplest model will take me around 100 hours to make finish and test. And my most difficult piece, the 3D Terra Luna, has taken around 900 hours already and is still not finished. Okay, he produces five watches a year, only five watches a year, retail price around 4,000 euros. And so he uh, obviously he has to have a side job, but yeah, it's really impressive, really impressive if somebody um, is willing to do this, is, is to take all the risks and the effort and sheer work. And what I really find fascinating here is, is as I said, the design. Um, because it's a little bit, it, it reminds me a little bit of, of Jacob and Co. You know, those, those one million dollar watches you can see in the Producer Michael videos, for example. Um, but they are, they are, you cannot wear them. They, they, they look like light bulbs, very fragile and and sometimes really ridiculous. I mean, this thing with a piano and El Padrino on the dial, <laughs> just a stupid watch. And and the Kittelas watches are different. They are, look a little bit more, boom, a little bit tighter and wearable in a way. And they have an element of steampunk in it. Very interesting. And Stefan Kittelas calls his design avant-garde. He sees it as avant-garde. And now you may say, ah, how can this be? Because steampunk is, refers to the, to the industrial revolution, so to the past, to the history, and avant-garde is something really fresh and new. But if you think a little bit more about the word avant-garde, then it makes sense. Because the avant-garde was a movement in the 19th century. And fun fact here, by the way, the French military and the German military in the 19th century called the, the troops which make the first contact with the enemy, they call them the avant-garde. This was the avant-garde. And you have it in the, in the German and uh, the English word vanguard as well. 
And so the avant-garde is meant you have to explore a new way with some sort of bravery. You have to fight your way through. And this is exactly, I think, what Stefan Kittelars is doing right now with his, with his watches. By the way, another in interesting fact, the upper class in Germany back then um, spoke French. Yeah, French. Friedrich, the, Friedrich, the Emperor Friedrich II said one time, German, I talk only to my soldiers and my dogs. <laughs> it's a very, very crazy time. And now let's talk a little bit about the movement. He uses ETA movements, a certain, certain very, very common ETA movement um, developed in the 50s, hand winding, rather big and chunky. You have, can see something there. You have surfaces which you can decorate or polish and yeah good choice very reliable piece and by the way rather pricey I've, I've checked this on eBay you can buy those EDA movements for 300 euros a piece which is yeah slightly more than the Chinese copy you can pick up for 30 and he really plays with those movement he decorates them and, and everything by hand on his website link in the description there you can find uh, can images of his of his workshop and it's very very crazy to see all these tools I don't even know the name for those tools yeah so very very impressive work and i've nearly forgotten the the dimensions he wrote um the lug to lug size is 52 millimeters case diameter 42 height is 12 to 30 millimeters um, this sounds high but the glass box crystal i use is four millimeter height uh, high this gives the watch a thin look yeah okay so wearable absolutely wearable not too small not too big you can wear these pieces and now my big question here is can you enjoy such a piece over months or weeks or years or is it that kind of watch you see one time and then you are stunned and you day one oh this is an awesome watch day two this is great watch day three oh interesting but i just want to know the time and then it's over this is the big question and i cannot answer this quest question without a watch so, Stefan Kittelas, if you're watching this, we need a watch here for a full review to see the thing under broad daylight, to test it a little bit, to play around. I will return it after that in perfect immaculate condition, but this would be awesome to have a piece for, for a review. Without a watch, yeah, we have only those beautiful images, but that's not the entire truth, I think. And so, again, we need a watch. Okay, next guy. The next guy, I call him Theo, but his real name is very sorry it's a great name Theodosius Theodoridis Theodosius Theodoridis I think the family origins origins from Greece and he is a he works in public rela public relations and he runs a blog a blog about watches called Zeiger link in the description German blog and I've written an article for him one time about Rolex uh, datejusts and the stretch repair and he's a very kind person, very, very nice guy. And sometimes we meet accidentally in bars and we say hello, have a little chat. And yeah, really, really kind person. And But he has seen my video about straps. And in this video, I um, report about a certain type of strap. And I said, this is always inferior in comparison to traditional stitched straps. And then he wrote me an email. What are you doing? <laughs> I have the new web shop. And the web shop offers exactly the type of strap you have doomed in your video and you're wrong those are great straps and i will send you one for a review and i said no and he said yes and then he sent me he sent me this this strap and then and then i said okay I'm, I'm wearing it right now and then i've read the article on his blog about this the straps <laughs> the article was that long i mean he origins maybe from from greece or his family but in a way he's really german because there you have all the details thoroughly thought out you find information about everything about leather quality stitching quality stitching colors clasp uh, everything about the manufacturers he had problems with and I think it took him several months to develop this strap the design everything everything is there very thoroughly and close to perfection and yeah I really respect this I highly respect this and so I thought okay let's do it let's test the straps and by the way this morning I visited my shoemaker I've picked up some um some shoe passion shoes first time i've purchased this brand because i was impressed by the leather quality price about 300 euros and shoemaker has to do some minor things with it and i showed him theo's strap i showed him the strap and the shoemaker has a very clear opinion about that strap and i will tell you this opinion as well right now in the light box 
Okay, here we are with the, this is the vintage, my favorite vintage Rolex Datejust, reference 16030 and on this, on this, on this Tiger strap. And this is, this strap is made in Germany and you can see very thick leather, very thick leather quality. And we find here a few, a few features. There you can see the stitching, very precise and rather long for this type of strap with contrasting color. This, of course, is not everybody's taste. I personally, I'm not the fan of contrast colors. I don't like contrast color in general, but I have to admit that this looks pretty, pretty good together with the, with the gold on the dial and the black. And so, yeah, it's, it's overall a very, very cool look. Very good look, must say. The second feature is that there is only one, I don't know how you call this in English, stay, stay band, I don't know. Can you explain this to me in the comments, please, how to call this? And this is only one, but it's, it's very thick and substantial. And this was important for, for Theo. He said this is absolutely unnecessary to have two of those. One is enough if you have those um, thick leather, which is not very flimsy. So this is enough. But the most important feature or the, or the most convenient feature is this little lever here. You have not a normal spring, but this is a type for um, changing the straps without any sort of tools. Very quick. And the, the, the idea is very simple. You, you pull back this little lever here and then you can pull out the, the, the strap like this. That's it. I mean, this is really, really cool. And Theo said to me he cannot understand why manufacturers not do this all the time. I mean, normally you buy yourself a watch for several thousand and it, came, uh, it comes with a normal spring bar. Why not everybody chooses this type of spring bar? What's the disadvantage here? What's the, I mean, is there a risk that you lose it accidentally? I cannot imagine, to be frank, how, you, how this should work together with your skin and this, this lever. Don't know. I think this is a very, very secure method. And to put it back now, it's very easy. Um, little tip, don't do it like this from this side. Always do it from, from the back side of the watch because if you make a tiny scratch here, then it will be on the, on the lug. Let's focus properly, please. And now you pull back the lever again and, oh no, okay, no, I cannot manage it. Yeah, there it is. There it is, snapped in. Yes, snapped, snapped in. Easy like that. Easy like that. So this is a really, really cool feature. And so um, the strong sides here is uh, one, the leather quality. Absolutely good looking leather or and the color as well. The very precise stitching I really like, I must say, really like, really like to, and, and the blue, okay, matter of taste, right? It's a matter of taste. But here again, you can see the stitching very, very strong strong and secure, looks very secure, this, this strap. Here you have the logo, oh no, here, here it is, the logo Tiger, and there you have made in Germany. G good normal clasp, so everything's fine. And now the downside, I've showed this to, to the shoemaker and he said, uh, he, he absolutely loved the look of, he's, he's a watch guy as well, and he absolutely loved the look of the watch together with the strap. But then he said, oh, okay, this is, the, the downside of the product. I mean, every product has a downside. So Theo, if, you, if you're watching this right now, relax. But he said the downside is there are two layers of leather. And so you have, um, and they are glued together and they are sealed with a sort of liquid rubber. And this is a little bit inferior to one strap of, of, of thick leather because if this breaks, if this seal comes off here, then water can enter this, this, this gap between the layers. I mean, there's not a big gap, of course, there's glue in it, but can last the glue against your, against your sweat? This is the big question. Will this strap last pretty long or not? And yeah, this is the downside for me. This is clearly the downside. I'd love to see this strap with one single strap of, of, of leather, but this will blow up the price because substantial thick leather is relatively pricey compared to a thinner leather. Thinner leather, thinner leather, wow, wow, my God, thinner leather, leather layers. And it's very comfortable on the wrist. I will put it on the wrist right now so you, so you, you can see it together with the date just. And first here you can see the, the, the leather, the look, and the, the single, don't know how to call it, stay. And this works perfectly fine, I must say. 
works perfectly fine because the leather is thick enough, it's not flimsy, I don't have the feeling that it's, it's, it's loose, and so yeah, it's great, great, great look. And now you can see my, my entire arm with it. And I mean, this is a really, really beautiful touch to the day. Just I think I, I mean now it's too hot, so I will I will change again to the metal. And so overall, very convincing product with one little downside. Again, and if it were my product, if I were Theo, I would, um, yeah, I would I would risk it. I would risk it to find a manufacturer or a method to produce this strap with one single layer of thick, fat leather, which will increase the price. Yeah, but uh, would uh, would be would be perfect. But yeah, okay, in this condition as well, good, really good looking strap. Look at this. I'm really not a fan. I was not a fan of this type of type of strap, but I'm changing right now here my opinion. Cool, cool thing. Okay, let's go back. And those straps retail at 85 euros, so well, a substantial price for a strap in my opinion. But I've managed a discount for you. You have 15% off with a certain code, link to the shop in the description, code in the description, there you can buy yourself a nice strap with a good discount on it. Only Europe, guys, I'm very sorry, but this is always the case, the, the, the reason is, the reason are customs for this. If you see the United States, for example, if you want to ship something into the United States, then the parcel has to be, um, the worth has to be under 100 US dollars, including the shipping costs. And so this is yeah, this is a real problem. If you ship your 85 euro strap, which are not roughly 90 US dollars with 20 dollars shipping, then you do have 110 and then you have to clear it and it's, it's a hassle. And yeah, so this is always a problem. So this time, this time only Europe, maybe in the future, the entire world, but this is up to Theo then. Okay, and now we are at the end of this video. Stefan, Kete, Lars and Theo, Thank you very much for the strap, the information, the images and the, the, the answers to my questions and everything. And dear viewer, if you have additions, questions, then please don't hesitate, post it in the comments. And if you want to see more images, then please join me on Instagram, Case Back Tim. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.